What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's late summer and the harvests are still coming in heavy. So today, me and Tuck want to take you along with us for a backyard garden harvest. Let's go! Let's just jump right into it because we have a lot of stuff to pick. Apples, tomatoes, pears, peppers. I mean, there's just so much. I want to bring you into the back to a raised bed where we're gonna start our harvesting. But I want to just show you a few things that we're gonna be grabbing. This is what we're gonna be picking and there's just, as you can see, there's just so much. So it's a blessing this time of the year to just be a part of, of all this incredible food, like these Rosa de Burns here and peppers in the back, tomatoes along there, cucumbers, sweet potatoes, just an incredible amount of food. We're gonna start things off in this old food forest though because I wanna grab some of these Cherokee purple tomatoes. These are my first uh, ones of the year. They took a little while to ripen, but man, did they look good. Let's grab the first one. I picked one already, but uh, I'll wait for you for the other ones. And this pallet raised bed we put in just, uh, I think about a year ago or so, the amount of food it's pumped out has just been absolutely incredible. So we've gotten a lot of value out of it. Before I show you this Cherokee purple though, look at this, look at these two sets right here. Look how incredible it looks like these two right next to each other. I think this is like a great picture. We've got the Rosella with like that red smoky color and then uh, Estorina with like incredible production. Look as you go up, that beautiful yellow tomato. Not as good flavor as something like the Sun Gold, but still a beautiful tomato. And then look at the absolute loaded on these sweet treats here. So excellent. But I'm gonna grab a couple of these Cherokee purples. Another one right here. Let's grab this. Look at that coloration. Oh, so beautiful. And we'll grab this next one here. And then we'll grab a couple of these uh, sweet treats. And I'm not gonna grab too many because it just would take a lot of time to grab them all. So I'll just grab a few here. And then it looks like our buddies here. The boss, what's up boss? We got a lot of harvesting to do today, boss. Maybe we'll grab him a cucumber or something. He's already got dirt nose. So he's probably been grabbing snacks and burying them already. This guy's the best. Let me grab some of these uh, Estorinas though. Look at these sets, oh my gosh. It's so fun to just pick the fresh fruit. I mean, it's just, it's so fun. Beautiful coloration on those. And then we'll drop some more. Some Rosellas now, oh yeah. And I just have so many things to get. When you don't know where to start, because you got so much to get, I think that's a pretty good problem to have. We've got apples right next to us here too. I'm just gonna grab one of these fresh apples. They look pretty delicious. Not huge size, but beautiful color. Let me take you over to the Honeycrisp. Those are the big ones. As we jump through here, you notice I have a lot of shiso along the ground. I'm gonna talk about that a little more as the video progresses. But our super sweet 100s, the ones that are <laughs> like 13 feet now, I just cannot stop them as long as with the sun gold cherries. It's funny to harvest tomatoes. Like I'm over six feet, yet I still have to reach up to get some of these tomatoes. So I think it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> and it's, there's something to it because this 12 or 14 foot tomato, imagine how much space it would be if it was sprawled along the ground. So we get so much added space and we can get bigger harvest because we use that vertical space. So many things in here are 10, 12 feet and we're getting so much extra, you know, growing room as a result of that. Here's a sun gold cherry, one of my favorites. And again, I gotta reach up to get some of these. Some of these are like eight feet tall. <laughs> Just absolutely incredible. Look at that. So much delicious food. Let's drop this in the bowl. And then we'll grab some of these monster uh, honey crisps. Some of these things just got so big. And I've like continually grabbed a few uh, apples here and there, and that's allowed the ones that are left to get massive. So look at this thing. Absolutely beautiful. We love to see it. We'll drop that one in <laughs> and let's keep moving. Oh, let's actually get these. Look at these uh, beautiful lemon boys here. See, this is one that I said, mentioned is a hybrid, so it's ready late in the season. This thing is just gonna continue pumping out so many delicious tomatoes. So we're gonna grab these two here. The bowl's starting to look pretty nice, but let's keep moving, we got a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is my pepper section. I just have a lot of peppers in here. As we come around the backside, you'll see we've got a bunch of them that are, that are ripe, like over here, like the apple sweet. But look at just the production in here and the coloration of them, absolutely beautiful. So even though peppers are like, like the heat, 
when it's super hot out, say like uh, 90 something degrees, the flowers will actually die off if they get too much direct sunlight. So it's good to put your pepper plants in a section that um, one of the hottest parts of the day, they get a little bit of shade. This way the flowers can get covered a little and you can get really good production. So here there's the apple sweet, look beautiful. And then right here are the uh, Cuminelle semi-sweet, which, which are right here. Tuck has been really liking the peppers. We're gonna let him do his own thing with the apple sweet. And then I'll grab a couple of these, uh, some of these Cubanelles. Nice coloration on these. Pretty beautiful. We'll drop that one in. And then let's grab just Jimmy Nardello back here. It's almost ready. Grab this Jimmy. And you can see the ones that are all on the cusp in here too. I've got some massive orange ones, the Gilboa orange. I'm gonna grab a few of those too. But before we do that, let's check out the Niagara grapes because oh my gosh, are they ready. Man, these things are like past. I probably should have grabbed them last week, but that's okay. There's an incredible amount ready. So I've got a lot of harvesting to do. And, uh, and this is kind of like what I envisioned, you know, years ago. I always hoped that I would be able to do this. To just come out and just grab some fresh grapes, just like this, you know, as many as I want. Just clusters, like this, look at that. Oh man, I'm so thankful. And just put that down, we'll grab a few more. Like this one here. And some of this. Maybe this one. And I'm not gonna spend too much time doing this, but uh, you can see how much we're actually gonna get. And the activity in here, the number of bees is just insane. It's funny though, because the bees are so preoccupied with the grapes, uh, they could care less about what I'm doing, which is pretty convenient, because I don't really wanna mess with them much. Over here, we have the uh, Chajero pears. And the last couple days, these things really started to fall to the ground. So just in the last few days after the windstorm, this is what was on the ground. So we're gonna collect a bunch of these. Look at this though. Look at the coloration. Look at the beauty. Oh, the flavor on these are so good too. This is a pear. I give these away to people often because I like kinda, you know, giving them something that they've never seen before. And most people, when they see this, they immediately think it's an apple. And then they taste it and they get a little bit confused. I explain to them that it's an Asian pear, even though it looks like this. The butterscotch flavor, because this is the Chijiro, so incredibly good. And you'll notice a lot of times I pick the fruit up off the ground. That's because then it, that's when it's the most ripe, when it falls. And if you don't have a garden in your backyard, if you're not doing this yourself, you probably can't get them this fresh and this good because, uh, because uh, you know, they couldn't get them in the store like this and then ship them. Even ones like this, where it's got bitten on the ground, this is a 20th century pear. I can just cut that out, it doesn't matter. I can cut that out and just eat around all the good parts. So I still get that good harvest out of this. Let's keep going though, I mean, we got a lot more stuff to grab. I want to bring you over to the figs I have right here. This is the brown turkey fig. A lot of you ask me why I'm not growing figs, and I do grow figs. We've got some that are just on the cusp of being ripe, like right there, and then there's another one back here, and we've got a bunch more, so I can't wait for those to get ready. And we've got it next to the, the greenhouse too, which acts as like a thermal mass to help emit some of the heat through the winter to keep this fig tree safe. Right next to me here, you'll notice we have a lot of shiso. I love growing that through the garden. And I think we need a bit of a change of perspective. So sometimes we like to say, I have to go out and do something in the garden or I have to go out and plant something. I think we need to switch it to, I get to go out in the garden and do something. Just that mind shift is, is, is kind of big because it leads to other different perspectives too. So for instance, shiso right here. Is this a weed that came up that you have to get rid of in the garden? Or is this something that came up to beautify the garden that's gonna take the solar energy, convert it into biomass that we're gonna be able to look at and get the beauty from, and then compost, compost it after, which will convert it into fertilizer. So, I mean, it's just a great picture if you have the right perspective. And I pull these shiso out right when they're about to flower around here so that they don't spread too much. I will let some flower just so I can so I can get them growing like this because I think it looks beautiful, but I won't let too many grow. We empty the bowl, it's time to fill it up again. To start off, let's grab some of these massive Hungarian hard tomatoes. Look at these things over here. <laughs> look at this thing. Oh my gosh, I, this is just insane. And look at the cucumber right next to it. Let's grab that first. Ooh, growing right next to it, that's a beauty, man. Oh my gosh, that's a really nice one. And look at this thing. Oh, it's gotta be the biggest tomato maybe of the year with the beauty and stuff. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this thing. An absolute monster. Very nice one. There's more on it. Let's grab another one here. Ooh, a little mark there, but besides that, really pretty. And another one down here. Notice I'm cutting, oh my gosh, look at the shape of that. 
That's the real heart shape. That is beautiful. No wonder why they call it the ox heart. So beautiful. But you notice I'm cutting everything. I don't like pulling it off. You don't want to damage the tomato. I like this. Uh, these are my Felco pruners, the rotating handle ones too. So I love these things. And uh, we'll grab another one down here, another ox heart. Looking excellent. Then a cucumber. Look at this cucumber hiding in the back. These things love hiding. This is a massive one. Good thing I grabbed that. And then we've got some more Cherokee purples back here. Look at this. Pretty nice. Another one back here. Or two. <laughs> I mean, look at that. You almost can't even see that there's like tomatoes planted there. But again, we're growing them up vertically, getting that extra space along that fence line. Then we've got some of these black kings ready. Look at these eggplants. <laughs> this thing is just beautiful. Oh yeah, oh, that's the black king. I've got a bunch of different eggplants ready too, so we're gonna see a lot of eggplants today. And then we've got uh, another one hidden back here. I'm gonna grab this too. And then this one, because I'm gonna take this plant out and then get some other stuff planted, but look at that. Ooh. Got some white cucumbers back there. I'm not even gonna grab, because I wanna grab this. Uh, look at these, <laughs> look at the size of these. Uh, these Gilboa peppers back here. This is a spot that gets a decent amount of shade too, but look at these. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's like a picture. That is picturesque, that pepper. Gilboa orange, I love these. They're delicious. They've got a great, massive size, incredible color. So striking. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's move back to our bowl. Grab some more stuff because I know we have a incredible harvest of the Rosa de Burns right here. Look at these Rosa de Burn. Oh my gosh, this is like, these are like, ugh, just, I don't know how, how you can get prettier than this. Look at that. The way the sun hits it, the, the color, it's just, look how many are on there. What an incredible variety. Let's just grab a bunch of them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is definitely a uh, tomato season. Look at this bowl. Uh, it's just filling up so quick. And what did I hit, like four plants or something? I mean, just incredible. Look at these. Oh my gosh, it's a really, really, really nice Rosa de Burn. Oh man, beautiful. Uh, I think there's a couple more in here. Nice little set, one, one a little split, but can't complain, there's so many good ones on this. One more in here. This one's actually a little, has gone bad, but that's all right. I've got a lot more tomatoes I wanna grab, but before I do that, you won't believe how many how many grapes we have ready. Right here, this is the Concord type, the buffalo grape. You gotta swing over here, this is just insane. <laughs> Look, at Look at this. Look at all these grapes, come under here. Oh my gosh, and, and look down this way. Look down there. Oh! So I'm gonna grab a few here, and I just, I just, there's so much food here. Look at this. Look at these sets. It's just, ooh, some of them are, have got eaten a little by the bugs, but I don't even care. These are just so many grapes. And Tuck's showing up. We make sure he doesn't have any grapes. They're not good for him. And he doesn't, he's not even phased by them. He doesn't even really want to get to them that much. But I got to grab so many of these grapes. I'm not just going to show me grabbing any because it'll get a little bit monotonous, but look at behind me. We got to grab more stuff. Super sweet 100s, too many to count. I mean, they should call it Super Sweet 10,000. Look up as we go. Look at the, these things are huge, these plants. Just massive. And then look at the Costa Luto Genovese. This is like, this variety is like so insanely beautiful. And it, and it has these sets where they, they all seem to ripen at the same time. Look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what do we do to deserve it? I mean, I just put the seeds in the ground and then kind of guide it along and this is what I, get it's amazing I put one seed in and it's crazy so I got to get more of those and look at all these honey drops here we got to grab and then here's the brandy wine orange which hasn't done great but we're still gonna grab a few of them and look at this one <laughs> Ooh, pretty nice pretty nice but one that's just blown me away I mean I've talked about it and I talked it up because what it was one of my top seven varieties but the chef choice orange like we're heading into later summer and that's when these hybrids I mean I can't stress it these lemon boys these these chef's choice oranges just take over look at this that's two look at these sets let me just get this whole thing 
You gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me, look at that. How, why would you not want this growing? I mean, it's just, <laughs> it blows me away. It blows my mind every day. And, and what was it, a week ago, I was grabbing food from this. So it's just, they're literally a food producing machine. The backyard has become this living biological machine. And the encouraging thing for me is that I know that I'm not, I'm not even 40% of where I could be. I'm just learning. I'm just starting to tap into it. Like Bill Mollison says, yield is based on information. So the more I'm learning, the more I'm doubling, tripling, 5Xing my yield with not any more work, just a better understanding of geometry and just yield in general and just refinement. Because this system, this food forest are built on principles. So I built it on principles and then every year I'm refining my system. So it's going to increase, it's just how it works. And then, let's grab some of these. More tomatoes here. I mean, I lost the ball by now, but who cares? <laughs> I just line them up. I just like stacks and stacks of tomatoes. Let's peel back this insect netting though, because I got some massive eggplants I gotta grab here. And some beauties, some absolute beauties. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. And another one, this one's even bigger. Oh my gosh, this thing. No lie, this is two pounds. No lie, look at the size of this thing. Look at it compared to duck. This might take you a week to eat, boy. Look at him, he's just, I think he's confused about the whole thing. Absolutely massive. God's hilarious. Let's check some of these too. <laughs> um, these ones are just so beautiful. I've talked about them before, but, huh? Is that real? You gotta be kidding me, I mean, wow. This is why we garden, dude. This is just, this is epic in my opinion. Check this out. This thing's dying on us, this eggplant. Unfortunate, you know? Unfortunate, still pumping out some eggplants. Why is it dying? The boss went crazy digging a hole down here. <laughs> His, uh, the guy was a little hot, had to cool off, wanted to do a little digging, so we had to let him. He's under there now. It's one of his hangout locations. He picks a few different ones every year. I I'm not upset at all that he killed this plant off because the amount of good that comes from him, it's not even comparable. Looks like he might be looking for a pepper. Get one of these, boy. He's trying to grab one himself. He's trying to pick a pepper. Let's see if he can grab one. He's trying to get to it, ripping the leaves off. <laughs> this guy's hilarious. He's looking for it. Let me just grab him one. There he goes. <laughs> we'll let him play with that though. I mean, just so funny. While he's playing with that, let me grab one of these uh, Bell Mac apples. These things are almost, they're getting towards being ripe, but I, I want to taste one. I haven't tried one, I don't think yet. And look at the size of them. Huh? I mean, come on, you can't get this in the store. Let's cut this baby off. Oh, maybe I cut it a little too high, but oh my gosh. Look at the beauty, and this thing hasn't even been shined. <laughs> Let me shine it for you real quick. Just take the shirt, the classic shine, you know. See how she goes, shine it like this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna try it. The moisture content is, it's, it's stupid. It's, there's so much, it's like an apple juice. So delicious, so refreshing. Look how white and good that flesh is, not even starchy. I really just gotta start eating about one of these a day because we got so many. Let me show you these over here. <laughs> look at the, look at the size of the, uh, the cherry bombs and another one next to me here just doing just as well. And then look at this late Bella apple right here. Look at this baby. This thing is one of our later producers. It's gonna start getting some color. I saw some of them, I think, I don't, I don't see it right now. That would look like it was getting a little bit, here it is, a little bit of color on here, a little tinge. We're gonna get a little bit of redding. So we're just waiting for some of that coloration before we start tasting them. But while we're waiting for those, let's check out another apple in the back we have ready. As we hop through here, Next to my blueberries, look how big the blueberries have gone. Man, those things are doing good, huh? Two plants next to each other. And then look at the other pair. That's gonna be an insane pear harvest. I mean, those things, wow. That's not an Asian pear. That's just a regular, but eh, great harvest. Here's an apple we're gonna be grabbing. Look, these things are ripe. Look at this baby right here. That is a nice apple. Let's take that one too. Look at this. 
Different varieties, different shapes, different characteristics, different flavors, but still absolutely amazing and absolutely delicious. I mean, you just gotta get them in. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. This has gotta be one of the biggest harvests me and Tuck have ever had. We just feel so thankful. All this food, look at all these grapes even. It's just, it's crazy. I mean, this much food. And we're gonna be giving a lot of it away to our friends and family. We just love growing it. We find so much joy in it. And I also love doing this because I want to paint the picture of what any of you can have if you put a little bit of effort in. And this is what happens when you, you know, grow over the years because the harvest seems to compound. Every time it's just more and more. So it's such a fun system to be a part of. I wanted to thank Laureen Green for your channel membership. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. It means a lot to me and Tuck. And uh, we also want to thank everyone who are giving the super thanks. It's like amazing that you guys are willing to contribute to the channel. And you all are the catalyst for all this food. I love growing it so that I can show you that the things I'm teaching you, they actually work. This right here is the promise. And like they say, the price is easy if the promise is clear. So this is kind of it right here. And we also need to thank Tuck because without that guy right there, he's the king, he's the master gardener. He teaches us everything we know. So make sure you throw some hearts down in the comments for this guy. He's just the best. He's the leader and we kind of just follow, yeah, we follow his lead. It's always worked out for us and we'll continue to do it. So we're going to call an end to this video. We hope you enjoyed it and we, maybe half as much as me and Tuck, you know, enjoyed actually making it. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Just hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck, the king of the garden, the master, the beast, and his apprentice James. We'll be back at you again real soon. We. Oui.